Hey, what's up guys? My name is Rob Richards. You are joining me here at the world famous, the mecca of bodybuilding, Gold Gym in Venice, California, where today I'll be showing you a bicep workout using only dumbbells and barbells. So first, check out what's coming up in today's video. So there you have it. Guys, please make sure you do subscribe to my channel, check out all the future content coming up, like the video, comment on it. I do like to jump on from time to time, see what you guys are saying and interact with you. And remember, this video is for you, so keep your questions coming and let's get started on the first exercise. I'm ready to start climbing the weight up, so let's get in there, let's go heavy. Sticking with straight bar, working the long head, jumping out 105. All right, so what we're doing here is uh, really we're working the long head of the bicep, the long muscle head, it's split into two heads really. So we're working that long outer section of the bicep really by keeping the elbows at the side of the body as opposed to in front, which is more the short head. So we're jumping up pretty quickly with the weights. You can see I'm pulling the elbows forwards a bit. I find that really helps contract and force that muscular contraction up at the top. So it's not my form breaking away from me, it's a, it's a conscious movement. Elbows forwards, up and then bringing my forearms up, but not quite vertical, therefore keeping all of the tension on the bicep. All right, a few more sets here and then we can move on. So one of the main things I'm doing here, I'm trying to incorporate a lot of uh, shocking principles. And by going heavy early on in the workout, really with the first exercise and by the second work set, I want to shock my body so that when I start to drop set, rest, pause, strip set, I still keep that intensity up. And even though the weight drops down, it's that tension, the feeling on the muscle. So after a couple of heavy sets and barbell curls, I'm going to drop it down to pretty much my warm up weight good for 15, 20 repetitions, really strict, really peaking that bicep, really squeezing and flexing the bicep throughout the entire range of motion, not just up at the top. So, great workout so far. A couple of you guys have made a valid point. What about a workout just stick with barbells and dumbbells? That's what we're doing today. Bicep workout, really aiming to get that separation between the short head and the long head. Really alternating between a lot of dumbbell barbell work at the sides and then isolation, single concentric work with our arm on a preacher curl or in front of our bodies to focus on that inner bicep. So, Lots to be done. Make sure you keep watching the whole video. Take notes, go back, watch exercises again, and put it to use. All right, we're gonna keep things moving. Move on, exercise number two. Okay. Where the weights? All right, let's go heavier, let's go heavier. I want a 35, it's 40, it's all good. You know what? Don't question yourself. I was looking for a 35. There's literally no 35s around here. So I had to jump up to a 40. And um and I did it just the same. Think about this, if all of the weights looked the same and they had no numbers on, how would you determine what weight you could lift? You're gonna pick it up, you're gonna do your set, if you can do more, you're gonna move up. We get 
We get anxiety, fear over the weight being too heavy, us not being able to complete the form, not use good technique or execute that set properly. Sometimes you just gotta like drop all boundaries, pick up a weight that's there and just get it done. If you can do it, great. If not, so what? You drop the weight back, you do a drop set. That's what we're doing today. We're just going with the flow. So what we're doing with this exercise, a single arm preacher curl, or technically a Scott curl, being on this side, is uh, it's a great peaking exercise. And I want to get this done early because I normally do this towards the end of my workout. I'm not quite as fresh, I'm not quite as strong. And uh, this really is a fantastic exercise. So I want to throw this into the mix early. I'm going heavier than I normally do. I'm feeling it in my arm workout. And what I'm trying to do here is get my elbow more towards the center of my gravity as opposed to keeping it out of here get a little bit more kind of weight and anchorage behind it. Open my arm out almost all the way, but I'm not fully lengthening that bicep. I'm gonna keep some tension in it. And then I'm squeezing and flexing it as I come up, not just bringing it up and then holding it. I keep talking about this in all of my videos, a loop. We're not gonna pause up at the top or the bottom. We wanna keep the repetitions going, keep the muscles having to slide and pull against each other. And that's really the whole working set here. So. Movement and control. Ten reps. It's ten reps, we're getting it done. You can see it's filling up my arms nicely. We got some heavy straight bar curls. We're doing some uh, single arm dumbbell preach curls. Arms are feeling big and full. We're gonna keep this workout going. We've got about three more exercises to go. So a lot of movements, a lot of different angles trained for just one body part. For some of you, this might be too much. Uh, I understand. Let's go with the flow experiment. Today's a good workout. I'm gonna keep pushing it. It's all about biceps just because I want to give them a good, thorough training session. So, about 50 minutes in total, and uh, yeah, we're getting it done. A lot of you guys are asking, hey Rob, if I've got a weaker muscle group, like my left arm's a little bit bigger, or my right arm's stronger, how can I compensate for that? Well, it's certainly not doing you any favors if you always start on the heavier, the stronger arm, and therefore you've already fatigued a little bit, you've hit failure, systemically you've kind of worked your body, so then you're having to move on to the weaker body part. So, Alternate, start on each side, um, left and right and right and left. So, let's get that left arm done. the way it goes my left arm I got more reps than my right arm and it's normally my right arm so you know you really got to ask yourself when you're training and you find yourself at that point of failure you're hitting that seventh that eighth rep in your mind you're done but your body's just getting started as soon as you hit failure your body then has that option but if you carry on you need to adapt and that's where this whole progression comes about. You've got to push your body harder than it's used to. We don't just do that by picking up a heavy weight and doing six or seven reps. We get to that point of failure, our training threshold. We push it a little bit more. If that means using a spotter or an assist, 
or using our shocking principle to drop set, a rest pause, a strip set, um, make use of it. Find your point of failure and then push it two or three more reps. You saw here, I was using my other arm just to help ease it up. But then it's still that eccentric, the lowering phase of the exercise that I'm still having to work against. So don't forget about that, the negative portion of the rep. As soon as you hit failure, you're still, still strong enough to control that negative part of the movement back down. So use the spotter, use yourself, do a cheat rep from time to time, get the rep done, and then resist that lengthening of the muscle. You're gonna feel the effects. All right, we're done here. Exercise number three. We're gonna keep things moving. Perfect. Camera rolling, all good. Let's go. So uh, I guess we're doing incline seated dumbbell curls and uh, one of the reasons I love doing this is uh, two words, support and not cheating, that's, that's more than one word but this keeps tension, maximum tension on the bicep and as you can see, fully lengthening out the arm so it's that maximum um, effort that's needed by the bicep to pull that forearm back up, we're not able to lean forwards, we're not putting any momentum, any body weight in. This is purely bicep work. So I'm keeping the same weight that I was doing the single arm preacher curls on. And uh, seven, eight reps is feeling heavy. So you don't always need to lift heavy. You gotta think about the intensity and the work done by the muscle. And 40 pounds on these incline curls, more than enough. So we're gonna keep this going. Probably do a couple of drop sets and mix this in with another exercise towards the end of the work set. All right, where's the camera at? Where are you guys? You can see with this one, I'm adding a new dynamic. Past two exercises, I was keeping everything, um, everything straightforward. Wrist, elbow, shoulder, everything in line and just focusing on that contraction. With this one, I'm gonna bring a little bit of the brachialis, the forearm muscles in, and rotate. So it's a little harder to do. I start to work more this section of my forearm. Palms neutral. As we bring them past the legs, we're gonna to start to rotate. And as we rotate, reel that bicep in, flex it, and keep tension on. One other thing, when I'm back here, my arms aren't all the way up here. I'm not bringing my forearm at a right angle to the floor because what does that do? Release tension of the bicep. If I've got the weight all the way up here, my biceps flex, but it's not really holding that weight. So by stopping just here, I'm keeping much more tension on throughout the entire working set. So even though my weight's not too heavy, the tension on my bicep is high. As soon as we fell, we pick up this and do some concentration fells. We're only halfway through the workout. Feeling good. Let's do one more. You know what? Let's change the angle. Change your variable. That made a big difference. Slight angle change on the bench made all the difference. We changed it by 10 degrees. And uh, 
I mean, it's towards the end of a workout, so I'm failing much quicker, but the six reps, I was done. So, uh, it's another thing. If you've only got dumbbells and barbells shoes in your gym, and maybe you've got a weight where you know you could lift a little bit heavier, you don't always have to increase the weight to increase the intensity. Shorten your rest periods. Slow down your tempo. Change the angle of the bench. I like that, the camera, the camera tilts as I tilt. It's the kind of production that we've got going on here. Uh, all right, three exercises done. We're gonna move on, exercise number four. And remember, we're sticking to dumbbells and barbells. So if you guys have any questions, comments, post them on this video. Hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, follow me on Snapchat. You can see everything I'm doing there, my diet, my training, what I get up to every day. So uh, let's move on, exercise number four. Moving on to another uh, barbell exercise. This one is gonna be a really great exercise for getting that separation in the bicep. And this one's gonna be a close grip, easy bar curl. Now, a couple of things with this one. We did a barbell curl at the beginning, but it was straight bar. So we keep the, the biomechanics of our body much more neutral to in line. What we're gonna do now is with that easy bar, bring our elbows round, but really bring them round a lot. So we're gonna hold the, the bent part of the bar, elbows forwards, and really lift at what is uh, it's quite an uncomfortable uh, position with our elbows. But all of that work and the effort done is transferred more towards the outer section, the long head of that bicep. And uh, it's a very different feeling than the other three exercises we've done so far in the workout. So that's another thing. Every exercise, you've got to think about how is this working my muscle? Am I working the same as I did in the last exercise? If so, what's the point? You've already worked it. And if you didn't work it hard enough, why not? So every exercise, we want to hit that muscle from a different angle. And with biceps, it's limited. I mean, really, the bicep just opens and closes. But we have a shoulder and an elbow, which can change the angle and the actual, um, can vary the amount of uh, stress transferred on different sections of the bicep. So we're just switching things up. Uh, let's jump in there with 85. OK, so elbows out. Oh. Towards the end of the workout, um, biceps is a small muscle. I mean, it really is compared to the back or the chest or the quad. So while we work in the bicep with so many exercises for a full workout, um, I mean, why not? <laughs> That's always my, uh, my approach to it. Some days you just feel good with the workout. I'm gonna keep pushing it. Same with calves. Some days I'll come in, I'll just hit calves. That's why I've got pants on at the moment. And I'll just hit calves for like 45 minutes. Um, same with biceps. I want to show you guys a lot of different um, variables, a lot of different exercises besides the normal barbell curl and dumbbell curl. So you can mix these up, you can add these to a different workout. Back or chest and biceps work great. But for me, even though it's a small muscle group, I still want to demolish it. And three exercises going heavy. The last two exercises, it's more just kind of pulsing the exercises, finishing off what little I've got left in the, uh, the biceps, but I still want to use enough resistance, enough weight to keep that intensity up there. So that's why we're going pretty heavy here. And uh, I'm just kind of pulsing the biceps like this. Four. Okay, just got to get it done.
we're not done. If you can do more, do more. Don't find yourself getting to that point of failure, eighth, ninth, tenth rep, and just putting the weight down. And even if you do, don't walk away, or don't walk far. Come back, tell yourself, I got more left in me. I got more to give, I'm not done yet. Get it done. If you can't walk out of the gym, truly, truly saying to yourself, I gave everything I had in that work, or at least for so many working sets, did you really do your workout justice? I can honestly say that maybe two out of every five workouts, I can really walk out of here and say, that was an incredible workout. I left it all on the table. I gave everything I had. Those other three workouts were still good, but they weren't quite up there. I'm not saying every single workout has to be that good, but at least make two, maybe three of them a week like that. And biceps, this is one of them. Final exercise, you guys. We're gonna do some uh, hammer curls here. Really bring it up with the neutral hand position. Bring the elbow around and sweep it up towards our opposite shoulder. Keep the arm close to our body. And you can see, again, focusing on that separation. I mean, these exercises don't build separation. It's all about the muscle culture and uh, the stresses we place on that. But certain angles and certain movements will help stress the outer portion more than others. So that's what we're doing. This thing heavy now. I can't even squeeze them. All right, that pretty much wraps up uh, today's bicep workout. We've been in here for an hour. Uh, five exercises, I think. A lot of work done on the biceps. Uh, pump is pretty crazy right now. So uh, I hope that's given you uh, a little insight into some more exercises you guys can do with barbells and dumbbells only. You don't need fancy machines. You don't need to be training at amazing locations like this gold gym. If you've got free weights, if you've got barbells and dumbbells, and you have the motivation to get it done, there's nothing stopping you. So, uh, whew, on that note, um, you know, please do subscribe to my channel, share it, like the video if you find it useful, comment, um, only good positive thoughts, and uh, you know, we'll just keep this going. Check out more of my playlists. You can see up here other playlists with uh, my boy here, Julian, with Steve Cook. Michael Hearn, all the great collaborations that we're doing here on YouTube, check them out and also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, see what I get up to outside of here in the gym. So uh, I'll be back here real soon. Keep your suggestions coming. I want to I wanna bring these comments to life and actually address them to help you guys um, you know, with anything that I can with training. So um, just stay motivated and remember this, no one's making you do this. This is your choice. This is our choice to get this done. So. You really do have the power. Sounds like a lot of cliche stuff, but think about this. When you're in the gym and you find that point of failure, what is your reason to keep going or to stop right there? Some of us go a little bit stronger, we go a little bit longer, we find that motivation, we dig deep, and that's what drives us. When you find your why, you find your motivation, you find what's gonna drive you. So think about that. Get it done. I'll see you guys back here soon. I'm out. Take care.